already in a comfortable position before we even get started. Oh. All right, going to ask you to turn, if you would, to 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. And uh, the name of this is a beehive for the end of the year. And the text, the Bible, it's all good. <laughs> Wherever you turn, it's good. <laughs> oh, my. Some bee things. <laughs> Beehives. Now, while you're turning to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter number 6, I'll read you something that uh, we downloaded. There's been a lot of uh, killing lately of Christians in Nigeria. Uh, there were uh, two killed Christmas Day. Uh, these uh, Muslim herdsmen came in out of the fields and, and injured six, killed two. Uh, and then they had, uh, a couple of weeks ago, they, they kidnapped a pastor. And then they demanded ransom money. And the wife took the ransom money to them. They held her as a hostage. After six days, they let her go. And then, after they took the money, they killed the pastor anyway. Now, that's the kind of stuff, you know, somebody put it like this. They said, uh, Christians, when we <coughs> preach the, uh, the gospel, we, we say, here it is, believe it or not. The Muslim preaches his untruth and says, here it is, believe it or else. <laughs> and uh, that's what we got out there right now. They kill all kind of uh, people. And, and really, Nigeria now is the number two place. I read where there were 90, uh, 940 kidnappings last year in Nigeria, kidnapping Christians. And there were several hundred killed. Uh, who And most of the time they were in church. They just come up to the churches when they meet. And of course they don't have any government protection. Uh, they turn their head the other way. And that's what happens. But uh, uh, there is uh, a lot going on in the uh, volcano and uh, tsunami and earthquake right now. A biblical island called Crete. Remember Crete? Uh, Paul was headed that way, and a storm came. and uh, Well, they've had two earthquakes in the last week, both of them 6.1 and 6.2 on the scale, which are pretty powerful earthquakes. And, of course, uh, uh, along with that, some minor tsunamis, not like the one they had years ago, which was, was devastating, but... Uh, also, I, I uh, saw where they dug up the bones of uh, a fella and his dog that uh, was found in Turkey. And, uh, of course, Turkey is where uh, most people believe the ark rested in Mount Ariat in Turkey. And uh, here, they say this, this thing is thousands of years old and... Uh, they say there seems to be some type of uh, eruption, volcanic eruption, uh, eruption, and tsunami debris covered and preserved this skeleton with a dog. So the fellow was. They said he apparently he couldn't. Apparently he could not be rescued. They tried to rescue him. How they know that? I don't know. But they'll write all kind of stuff around these issues. And who knows if the thing's as old as it said, but uh, it was in Turkey. A uh, lot of strange things happen in Turkey right now. They found another uh, synagogue under an old building of a very famous town there in Turkey. And what had happened, they, they're going in there doing some 
renovation in this old town because they wanted to draw some more tourists. And when they renovated one of the buildings, took it down, they found a, the, uh, a synagogue with the mosaics on the floor. And so these, uh, Paul would go into Asia Minor and preach to these synagogues and these Jews. And now they're finding it all over the place, these synagogues. So they found three in, in that area in the last four or five months. But the odd thing is they had mosaics, well-preserved mosaics with their artwork depicting different things and uh, the 12 tribes and all. You know, uh, Garner Ted Armstrong said that the 10 tribes were lost. Well, they had 12 there in Paul's day. And Paul wrote in, uh, James wrote in the book of James, he said, James, the servant, to the 12 scattered tribes. But there's a lot of people that say no. Since the time they went into a captivity under Babylon and uh, Persia, they never did come back. And there was only two, Judah and Benjamin. Well, that's not uh, what James found out several centuries later. He, he said there are 12 scattered tribes out there. And then now you find in Jewish synagogues in Asia Minor, just like Paul said, they're all out there. So uh, uh, biblical records are always true. From time to time, history catches up with it. But uh, where it doesn't, they just have to go down as being wrong, huh? Because they are just that. All right, bees, some bees. We've got to do some bees for um, the end of 2021. And this is sort of a light thing tonight, but hey, I thought it was interesting. Verse 17 of chapter number 6 of 2 Corinthians says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate. There's your first B to close out 2021. Be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. So as we approach a new year, we need to reevaluate, are we separate? You know, today's Christian church, they downplay being separate. In fact, they promote being uh, seeker-friendly. In other words, kind of be like them. Because that's the way you reach them. Totally contrary to not only what the Bible says, but historic Bible Christianity for 2,000 years was always come out from among them. Don't worship the idols they worship. Don't participate in the licentious behavior they participate in. Don't have the philosophy of life that they have. That's a tenet of Bible Christianity long before we fundamental Baptists ever came around, historically speaking. Now the philosophy is, look, let's don't make ourselves so peculiar that lost people won't feel comfortable. Now, I, I know when I got saved, the hippie Christians, the ones that were, you know, going around, hippie, peace, love, and uh, I wasn't the least bit afraid of them. They were funny to me. But that old guy that came at me with a black back Bible and had a haircut, he scared me to death. I didn't want nothing to do with him. I want to get as far away from that dude as I could because he had a different Christianity than the ones that had a, I never will forget, some one, of, one uh, lady came up and she had a, a, a hash pipe in her mouth and she had a guitar and she says, I want to talk to you about Jesus. <laughs> I said, I don't need anything you got, you know. Even in a lost condition, I knew I didn't need that. Uh, I wanted something to get me out of what I was in. And that wasn't, that wasn't going to do it. So he was trying to be just like the rest of us, but put a Christian look on it. That's all. And so, um, you know, be separate. It's always been that way. Now, look at the book of Ephesians. We're going to see if you, you can find it in your Bible tonight. The book of Ephesians. And uh, 
try to find it without using the tabs. <laughs> I tell you what, those tabs become invaluable at this point. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 32, another beehive. You know this one. And be ye kind one to another. Be separate, be kind. We're talking about ways to close out 2021. As we know, this is just a couple of days away. Uh, there's so many odd things that took place in people's New Year's celebration. Uh, somewhere over there in Italy, they would throw out the windows onto the streets, everything they didn't want to keep at midnight starting the New Year. They literally tossed it out on the streets. And the poor... Uh, debris people had to come by and pick up all that junk. They said there were old pianos tossed out the windows. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine from two or three stories up, you know, here comes a piano and uh, what's left of it. And, but, uh, but in this case, something that we could wear not only out of 2021, but uh, it would be helpful to uh, practice into 2022, and that is kindness. Now, uh, kindness doesn't mean uh, uh, endorsing somebody's lifestyle. It means when you deal with people, you deal with them not with hatred and revenge or belligerency or arrogancy. You deal with them with a meek, kind spirit. That's hard to do. It has to be the fruit of the spirit. Because somebody comes up and, and uh, gives disparaging remarks about your faith or or how you believe uh, concerning the Lord Jesus, and they attack you, the normal thing is to react. React, you know, wait a minute. But God's plan is, hey, not only be kind to those, hey, be kind to your enemies. That's what he says. Uh, pray for them that despitefully use you. And so being separate and being kind, two issues that we ought to deal with. And then Philippians, one book over, chapter number four. Kind of put these in a hive if you can think B. I'm not seeing this in a picture, but this is the word picture. Got a hive. I uh, hope this one's got honey in it, don't you? You ever been around a, a hornet's hive nest? You, if you get up on these rivers... I'm telling you, certain times of year, uh, my grandson and I were up in a slough in uh, Apalachicola, and we got in this thing, and you know, they got some big bass and a lot of big brim in there, and we thought we were cool because we were able to sl sliver up in there and get the boat maneuvered around a couple of logs, and we were just set, and I said, all right, let's tie up over there to that, that tree stump, and I all of a sudden heard him say, whoa, Papa. <laughs> back up and there on that branch was a giant hornet I mean it's that big and we we're fixed to walk right into it <laughs> consequently we didn't drop a line we got out of there as fast as we could and I think we flew over a couple of those logs we'd maneuver around <laughs> man it gets pretty bad when you have to carry wasp spray in your boat. I don't remember having to do that as a kid, but now, man, they're everywhere. But so when you got your little hive being made, it, it, it's to be separate, be kind one to another, said tenderhearted, uh, forgiving one another is his plan. And then in Philippians chapter number four and verse number six, here's another B that we ought to be aware of. He says, be careful for nothing. In other words, don't get full of anxiety. Don't get worried. Don't get hindered. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Don't hesitate. Uh, be careful for nothing. Uh, a lot of times we, we neglect going to the Lord in prayer because we say, well, maybe the Lord wouldn't want us to pray about this or maybe the Lord wouldn't pay attention to this prayer or maybe this is frivolous stuff but the admonition here is don't let that happen to you 
In fact, the admonishment is don't be careful. Don't, don't be worried about it. Just come. Come with whatever you got. And it is right to pray about uh, things that we count frivolous. In fact, I think it was Spurgeon told somebody one time, there are no small things with God. So whatever we uh, come across, you know, people say, well, I don't know what to pray about. Well, there's plenty of things that are considered small that you could pray about. Uh, pray about your health. Pray about your bank account. Pray about your relationships with your neighbor. Pray about your church attendance. Pray about your physical abilities to continue on. I mean, there's, there's things that you may think, well, God's not all that concerned about. No, He is. And uh, he lets us know by the Holy Spirit when the apostle penned this record to the church at Philippi, uh, apparently uh, they were hesitant about bringing things up to God. And he said, don't, uh, don't get uh, hen uh, hesitant like that. So be ye separate, be ye kind, be careful for nothing. And then the book of Colossians chapter number one or chapter number three. Colossians, I like the fact we're going in a line right now instead of to and fro in the Bible. We're just going from book to book. All right, here it is. Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 15. He says, uh, And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to which you're also uh, called in one body and be ye thankful. Now that's a, a universal uh, command to all Christians. Uh, be thankful. In fact, uh, most of the time when we're depressed or feeling the blues, like people got, you know, uh, Christmas comes, everybody has these letdowns, don't they? Everything gets hyped up. And uh, I can, I'm thankful tonight that all my Christmas decorations are down and packed up and put in the closet. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't want to be tempted with the Christmas blues. <laughs> They're nowhere to be seen. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a lot of people get like that, you know. They get, they get a, you know, you're, it's so much hype in our culture, is it not? It's just hype. It started hyping. Uh, Cracker Barrel started putting out Christmas stuff before Halloween. And they kind of crowded Halloween out this year. And, uh, but yeah, they got this, uh, and they start putting all the Christmas stuff out, and so they start hy hyping up. And then the music comes on before Thanksgiving. I, th that's bizarre. I don't want to listen to Christmas music on November the 19th. I mean, it, it just doesn't fit. We hadn't had Thanksgiving yet. It used to be you'd, the day or two after Thanksgiving they'd put it on. But now their channel's devoted totally to it for a couple of months. And so you get kind of wore out on the thing, you know. And, and, uh, and it really doesn't sound good unless it's cold to me. If it's cold, I, it, I like Christmas music. If not, hey, give me something else on that, you know. But, but bottom line is... We get so caught up in this stuff, and then when the day comes, boom, it's over with. And everybody goes, Shh. and when they do that, their brain and their soul goes, Shh. and uh, <laughs> you always got a Scrooge around like me saying, take it down, take that stuff around, stick it back in the closet. We don't want any more. <laughs> I do that for what you call self-protection, because I don't want to get in the blues. And if it's not in front of me, then I don't have to think about it. So, uh, but, but uh, mainly being thankful will overcome all of that. Thankful not only for Christmas, and, but thankful for the fact that whoever you celebrated Christmas with, that you had an opportunity to do it. Uh, thankful that you were able to have the health to have the season. Uh, not everybody felt great. And some people had health problems, but somehow we were able to get up enough to enjoy a, a two or three days there where we could around that season. Thankful for that. Thank God that you lived through it. And, uh, and you're on the other side now, and 
uh, of this other side of Christmas. I don't mean that. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, one of the saddest things is to see the funerals around Christmas. Uh, I mean, what a horrible... And I heard two or three folks uh, passed away Christmas Day. Some of the people we have in our church, some of their kinfolk, a couple of them, I think, uh, got word that they'd passed away on Christmas Day. Uh, uh, the uh, couple of pastors of churches uh, uh, passed away on Christmas Day. Uh, the, past, the founding pastor of uh, the great uh, Briarwood Presbyterian Church in Birmingham, oldest, uh, well, he started the Presbyterian Church of America, the conservative wing of the Presbyterian Church, uh, but he, he passed away uh, on uh, Tuesday right after Christmas. And, uh, and then uh, all the deaths we've heard about in the media recently. But... But be thankful for whatever God's given you, especially your health. And so we've got be separate, be kind, be care careful for nothing, be thankful. And then we're getting over to the book of 1 Peter. And we're going to look at chapter number 1. And you're saying, surely he's fixed to run out here. Or you're praying that he runs out. <laughs> okay, 1 Peter chapter number 1, verse number 16. Here's another B we can incorporate in 2021 as we make our way out. He says, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Look at verse 15, or verse 14. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy, all in all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Uh, so if God wrote it, uh, it never goes away. And uh, he literally said, the reason I want you to be holy, because it's written that you ought to be. Because I am. Um, the Lord Jesus would quote sometimes, you know, when, when uh, Peter denied the Lord, the Lord told him, he said, you're going to deny me. And Peter said, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. He says, yes, you are, because it is written. <laughs> Peter, you can't, hey, the word of God will not return void. And it's eternal. And so even when Peter said, I'd never do that, the Lord said, you don't have really any choice about it other than your own wicked self-will. But either way, I, I already knew it was going to happen because it was written. So uh, when he said, be ye holy, for I am holy, that never changes, especially to the New Testament Christian age. And I say this, we keep reflecting back at this, but I'm telling you, the culture of Christianity today does not follow that type of command. We just, it just doesn't. Nobody's talking about holy living, separate living. In fact, it's the opposite. Well, that's a, another B, and then look at, Verse uh, chapter of the book of James. Look at James. I think we had to go back, didn't we? James chapter number five. Here's another B. Yep, we went backwards this time. Should have put six up in, to five and five to six. All right, here it is, chapter number 5, verse number 8. Let's look for a B. Be ye also patient. Oh, I don't know about that. We're going to move on from that one right there. I don't, know. I don't have any comments about that. <laughs> Hadn't been too patient out here on the roads. I tell you what, you get shot out here now, won't you? I mean, all, there's a bunch of shootings between here and Mobile. Uh, you're not safe. Apparently in your home, people getting shot in their home, uh, getting shot in department stores, getting shot at gas stations, getting shot when they pull up at the intersection. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a wild and wicked world out there. And murder is in the hearts of men. And there's no, there seems to be no sorrow, no grief. Uh, 
but we know it comes, the devil is a murderer from the beginning. That is the taking of a life wrongfully is a murder. You're not lawful. That is the only, the, uh, thou shalt not kill. That's still uh, in session. God hadn't taken that out of session. But these people killing each other and they act like it's a badge of honor. You know? Well, uh, whether or not our justice takes care of it, God's justice will. Uh, if people don't get saved, they're going to hell. Uh, there's no murderer will be found in heaven. There are former murderers that were washed in the blood. And, uh, but uh, they don't let you, you know, if they would put the Bible back in the school and let the teacher be able to teach right from wrong out of it, you wouldn't see all this going on. These 16, 17, 18 year olds are killing each other. And, and all they, in, in my mind, how they do it is they've watched these video games and they think we'll kill them today, they'll be back on the street tomorrow. But they don't understand the finality of death. And to me, it's simply the devil's deception. He's got a whole generation of, of people thinking that this is the way you do it. And all of them, if they don't end up in jail or dead themselves, God will bring them to justice at the great white throne judgment, one way or the other. Isn't it funny when you saw some of these shows where uh, even in the media they report that they caught some guy 35, 40 years after he killed somebody. And they've done several of them lately. They've through this DNA sequencing and, and they've been able to develop. And the, they had a guy out there out west that uh, he'd killed some girl 38 years ago, moved down south and struck up a life, got his family and all that, and he's doing on his merry way, and all of a sudden he gets a knock at the door one day with a warrant and arrest, and they had traced the DNA that they found at the murder site to him. And uh, it's, it's like, be sure your sin will find you out, huh? And, 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 and the Lord is not winking at this. Uh, the Lord is watching it all. And... Uh, but that's not going to be anything compared to at the great white throne. All the murders that have gone undetected and unknown, everybody at that judgment seat, all the lost, are going to stand and they're going to have to give an answer and they'll have no answer. Now thank God uh, we've had our sins judged already in Christ. Now, we'll have to give an account of our time with the Lord and how we used it. But uh, we won't have to give an account for unjudged sins. They've been judged, uh, our past, present, and future, uh, by the finished work of the Lord Jesus. So be ye patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. And then lastly, without any comment, look back in the book of Hebrews. Chapter number 13, got one more B to put in your hive. Uh, chapter 13, verse number 5, this is very uh, apt to close out with. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. <laughs> A B, content, admonition for the end of the year. All right, look forward, Lord willing, to seeing you on Sunday morning. Pray for those who are being dealing with these pestilences and all of that. And uh, let's ask God's protection. Lord, we thank you for the night, the opportunity to meet together. Help us, Lord, to be aware of what you've commanded us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.